Hello everyone, welcome back to the Toy Corner. We have five new figures to add to the collection today. There is a theme again going on, see if you can guess it. Just take a guess. It's not green. There's green there, but it's not green. You'll soon see it's not green. No, no, today it is about large figures. And, and yes, Boba Fett isn't actually larger than the other figures. He's the only kind of odd one out, but he is a deluxe, so I'm counting it. But let's not worry about themes. Let's get started with the toys. First up, we have Battle Cat, furred and fanged steed of the powerful He-Man. Here he is in the box from Masterverse. We have some nice artwork on the side, gorgeous artwork on the back, and of course it also reveals on the back that you can remove his mask and we get Cringer, which I think was a first in the Masters of the Universe line. Not entirely sure. Oh, and yes, there's a blurb there. Go ahead and read it. But what say we take the kitty out of the box? And here we have our big bad kitty outside of the box, and boy, he is huge. This thing is hefty. I, I have fairly large hands, and I can't even get my fingers around it. There's a lot of fine detail. You can see the fur sculpted into the plastic. You can see a lot of the paint detail and little bumps here and there on the saddle. They even have a little separate color here to kind of show where He-Man will sit as if this and this didn't give it away. Nice spikes coming out, and I think overall it's a pretty good design. Helmet sits on loose, but from what I understand, that's kind of a staple of Masters of the Universe. Have some good detailing on the paws. I like the little pads, uh, little toe pads. I'm sure there's uh, toe beans, is that what they're called? Toe beans? Am I hip? Am I with it? Tail is, of course, articulated. And just like any other cat, Battle Cat is sticking his butt in your face. Underneath the armor, we have Cringer, just as promised on the back of the box, who has some really good detail and some pretty great posability. There's a joint here, joint here, lots of joints here and there and everywhere. Hinged mouth, of course, so he can talk. Well, I don't know about that, he man. Is that what he sounded like? I don't recall. I've only seen so many episodes. The saddle is uh, made out of a nice, very pliable, very soft plastic, maybe a vinyl, I'm not sure. The helmet is still soft, but just a bit harder than the saddle. Battle Cat doesn't really have any accessories uh, outside of the armor, which I'm not sure if you can consider that an accessory. It is a part of the transformation, so I'm going to count it, but I'm not really sure what they would have added for accessories. Maybe a saddlebag for some, some items, some extra paws with their claws in, but now who would want to pose their Battle Cat with the claws in? You tell me. But he certainly can serve his purpose as He-Man's faithful steed and battle companion, although with how large he is, it does look a little bit awkward. I think he should have been just a little bit smaller. Uh, I think that's a common criticism, and I, I definitely agree. Still, he looks amazing, and He-Man does not look bad at all up there. He's not on there very solidly. Oh, he actually passes the tap test, so maybe I take that back. Uh, it feels like he probably could have sat a little better on there, but, 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 I know for a fact that the Origins figure does not fit on the Origins Battle Cat any better than this one does, so I'll not hear that as an argument. It's difficult to recommend these two to add to just any collection, but if you're interested in Masters of the Universe, there's no reason not to pick them up. Both are generally on sale all the time. But either way, whether you decide to pick them up or add them to your toy shelf or not, I am going to happily add them to mine, so off they trot. And surprising no one, we have our Transformers Premium Finish GE-03 as our next subject to take a look at. Here is the box. Yay, box. Let's get rid of the box. And underneath that dull black box, we have the pretty box that shows us now that we are looking at Ultra Magnus from the War for Cybertron. We've got some nice toy pictures here, toy picture here, 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 also toy pictures, a nice toy picture here, and a lot of language that I cannot read. But that's enough looking at the box, let's crack this bad boy open. And in all of his glory, here is Ultra Magnus, beautiful blues and reds with a nice dull gray, all kinds of extra added scuffs and wear and battle damage all around this big fella. 
No, he's not quite as large as Battle Cat. We started off with the largest first, but that's okay because he is much larger than Optimus Prime. As illustrated here, much taller. Definitely qualifies as large. For accessories, we have these nice shoulder-mounted guns, or missiles, whatever they are. The big gun you see him holding here, and these two guns here. He has, of course, all the articulation you would expect in a Transformer. And uh, spinny wheels that he can roller skate on. Whee! And one other thing that makes him larger is he actually has three different modes. So, let's go ahead and change to the first alt mode. In case you weren't aware, all of the outer covering is just armor. And the true form of Magnus inside is very similar to Optimus Prime. Look at that, similar heads and everything. But as stated earlier, that is only alt mode number one. Let's get him into alt mode number two. And here he is in his vehicle mode. I don't think he can do the car carrier thing, but he certainly can carry each and every accessory that he came with. Everything fits in a nice tight little package, even though you can see some feet on the back. And if you look close, you can see a little bit of Magnus head sticking out there. But it rolls nice and smooth. And all in all is a very solid transformer. The bottom doesn't even look like a crunched up robot. Although to be fair, if you take off all the trailer stuff, he does sort of just look like a sitting down robot with his head tucked away. As I have no doubt mentioned before, I did not grow up with the original Transformers. I was just a bit too young. They were being just a bit phased out while I was in my formative years. But if I was into the franchise, I guarantee that Ultra Magnus would have been my favorite. Not because he's large or blue, mind you. I know I like Leonardo, but it wasn't for the blue, it was for the katanas. I love toys that have removable armor pieces. Some of my favorites, you could take all of his armor off and put it all back on, forget about it. This would have been my favorite Transformer, no question. But regardless of nostalgia or anything else, this figure is great. The armor locks on wonderfully, there's no looseness to it, it doesn't feel like it's going to fall off. Both modes look fantastic. He has great storage options for everything, good posability. Listen to that ratchet. So I can absolutely give this my highest recommendation. It's also generally not too hard to find one of these. It may not be the premium edition that I have, but they, they came out with three versions of this figure, four versions I think. Point is, he's not difficult to find, and usually not super expensive. So if you have the means, I recommend add this one to your toy shelf too. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get him posed on mine. Next up we have the Hulk. You know, sometimes I just can't help but do a silly voice. Do you ever get that impulse? Do a voice for a character? But our Hulk here is actually part of the 20th anniversary series of Marvel Legends from Series 1, one of the originals redone. So he's going to include this lovely little stand here as well as this uh, pop out back, but you know, let's take a look at that up close and personal. I, I usually just rip into these, but I'm going to try to be a little more careful uh, so I don't damage, because I can feel there's something... Uh, I need to not damage the, the backdrop here. So let me carefully get this guy open. Upon closer look, I think that, that uh, the backdrop is just that Marvel comic looking uh, thing back there, so um, time to rip away. And here he is. Look at how massive this figure is, and I can already tell the articulation is going to be out of this world, but I do want to clarify some things. I am not the biggest Hulk fan. I, I, I enjoyed the movies well enough. I enjoyed his uh, MCU appearances, but I don't really know that much about the character outside of what I've seen in the movies. No, I bought this character. I picked up Hulk for my collection for one reason and one reason only. My son happens to really enjoy Hulk uh, from that show uh, Spidey and His Amazing Friends, yes. He's since sort of stopped watching that, but I think he'll still enjoy playing with this almost as much as I will. And you know, I'm glad that I picked it up because this, this is an incredible 
big, beefy figure. I honestly cannot get over the articulation of this figure. I mean, you have the ab crunch, you have the, the waist, the legs, the bends, the elbows, every, the head, everything. And I, I usually don't spend this much time on articulation, but when you have a figure this large that can, that can bend and move this much without really breaking the sculpt all that much, that's, that is a great feat of engineering there. Hey, look, feet. This is just, this figure is impressive. I am very happy with this Marvel Legends Hulk, and I didn't think, I'm not that big of a Hulk fan, I'm really not, but just the massiveness of this, and, a, and look, he can move his arms back, he can, he can twist, so he can, it's like he's coming at you, like, ah! But I can't just keep gushing about him like that. Let's uh, take a look at the detail. You see all the rippling musculature, some nice veins underneath, those hands have fingernails, the toes have veins and toenails, and very natural looking toes. It's, it's interesting that they would choose to separate this from this. They could have probably put them together, and no one probably would have complained about that, but they didn't. The, the different color of the ripped pants, just the, the jeans texture on it, the denim texture. Oh, it's all so good. All right, but let's let's also take a look at the figure's accessories, because he, he has a few. Of course, this whole time you've been seeing this snarling, shouting face and his open, gripping hands. But he does also have this more menacing grimace and these hands ready to smash! But mixing up the pieces, you can almost get a, a sort of a cautious, even a, a scared look. Maybe he's ashamed of what he's done. Uh, Bruce Banner is coming out and he's trying to stop the Hulk's rampage. He comes with a helmet of some sort. I'm sure it's a reference, something that happened in the comics. I just, I don't know enough about it to know exactly what it is, but it does look like it has a ball joint in there, or a, a socket for a ball joint in there, I should say. I wonder. Uh, no, it uh, certainly doesn't fit. We also have this lovely display stand that can either show a comic book cover, or a nice background for Hulk to stand next to. Well, uh, but he is quite a bit larger than it, so uh, it probably won't make a very good backdrop for him, so much, so much as a side drop. Just flip that around. There we are. That, that looks lovely. He also comes with this base that has a uh, sort of a impact effect, as well as uh, some cracked ground. It looks pretty nice. I'm sure you can get a lot of good poses out of this. Let's try to find one good pose. There, someone's made the poor fellow upset and he's punched the ground. I'm sure there's much, much better ways to make that work. Uh, maybe I'll give it one more try. Well, there we go. He's now uh, angry, I guess, about the helmet, perhaps, and he's stamping his foot to cause a, a sort of a shockwave. I'm sure anyone else out there could do a better job. I'm just, I'm not very creative. I'm not very experienced when it comes to this. Not yet. Give me time. But where would our big bruiser Hulk be without his friendly neighborhood Spider-Man? I think they're friends. In my mind, they're very good friends. Uh, Peter Parker just pushes Hulk just enough not to get him to break, but to get him to break a smile. But I also wanted to bring in Spider-Man, just to give you an idea of just how massive this Hulk is. Like, just, just look, he dwarfs him. He's down here, up here. Look at, look at it. Spider-Man's entire torso is the size of Hulk's arm. Well, he's been in front of the camera for long enough. I think it's time we added the Hulk to the toy shelf. From the Star Wars Black series, we have Boba Fett as he appeared in Return of the Jedi. Now, I can tell this because the box says so. I enjoy Boba Fett, but I don't know so much about him, so that I could tell which film he's from based on his attire. As with most Black series, we have some lovely art on the side, sort of the same lovely art on the back, as well as a little blurb about the character, read if you would like. But as for myself, I am going to get this bounty hunter And now that we have Boba out of the box, we can take a look at the figure before playing around with the accessories. So there's a lot of scratches and scarring. He's seen a lot of battles. You can see that his cape is tattered and full of holes. His little helmet antenna moves down. I should probably know what that's called, but I don't, and I don't feel like Googling it right now. 
Detail-wise, there are a lot of folds in the fabric, the belt is nice and loose. There are a lot of little details they got in there. They must have really studied the Boba Fett costume from the Return of the Jedi. Being a deluxe figure, Boba Fett comes with a lot of accessories. We have his backpack with removable missile. We have his blaster pistol in both a complete and ready to be chopped in half version. There's a wrist cable with grappling attachment, some fire effects for his rocket back, and a lovely flame effect to fire at those pesky Jedi and their gun-cutting lightsabers. In both details and accessories, I have no complaints whatsoever for this Boba Fett. It's a fantastic representation of the character who became cool and loved simply because he could talk to Darth Vader without fear. I suppose if there was anything I would nitpick, it's that his backpack does seem to come off a little too easily. I did have it fall off once or twice while I was trying to pose him, but that could be on me, perhaps. He does, it does seem to hook into this hole here and these two pegs, and it just doesn't seem to go in that look. There's already a little bit of paint wear there. It just doesn't seem to go in there too well, but again, that could be me. Actually, upon closer inspection, that's not paint wear. That's a bit of the uh, plastic edge here being pushed into the hole. I'll have to see what I can do about that. But at the end of the day, this Boba Fett is great, and I am happy, 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 happy to add him to the toy shelf. Oh, and just as a quick little addendum to my last video, I had mentioned that this Darth Vader had stiff joints that uh, limited his movements. His joints actually have loosened up a lot, and his legs kind of makes him hard to stand, although uh, that's not what I wanted to address. What I wanted to address is that he actually, I, always, I thought that he could only move his arm about this high, which I thought for Darth Vader, that's, that's fine. He has this shoulder arm here, but actually no, I just, I didn't push it far enough. He has just as much articulation as every other Black Series character that we have looked at thus far, with the only exception being he can't really do much of a, a waist movement with his cloth goods cape here. But I just wanted to clear that up. And the final figure of the day will be the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimates Slash. But we have the boring mailer here. Let's get rid of it. Almost knocked my lighting over, but here we have the slip cover over the main box. It's just purple, it has slash, we're getting rid of it. Down at last to the window box, the real packaging of the figure. We can see slash, and much like everyone else in this review, with the exception of Boba Fett, he is a big, beefy toy. Of course, box-wise, we have the usual pair. We have a sort of a in-between, not quite the purple of the bad guys, not quite the green of the turtle, just somewhere in between. And of course, we have our little blurb about Slash. Feel free to read if you would like. But boxes, boxes, boxes with Super 7. Let's get this out. And Slash out of the package is just as big and beefy as he looked inside the package. Thus far, this is my favorite toy of the day, simply because I don't have any problems getting him to stand. He's pretty solid. The details on this figure are amazing. The, the bandana, I'm not sure how well it comes across on camera, but has a nice uh, texture to it, like a cloth texture. His skin is pebbled and scarred and it just looks very monstrous. Much like his big toothy grin, just a little bit unhinged, a little bit monstrous. You're not sure what to expect from him. Even his toes have these big pointy nasty toenails. Actually, all of his nails are yellow. Uh, now, one thing that I did notice right uh, as I took him out of the package is this tail here. Uh, it does have articulation, but it doesn't seem to, to move out of the way. So, um sitting him, if there are uh, any further vehicles outside of the turtle van in this line, sitting him is going to be a little bit of a challenge. Now, while I did grow up with the Playmates Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles line that started back in the 1980s, I never actually had Slash, and I don't know how I would have felt about him as a child. I think I probably would have found a way for him to be a, a hero. I think he was meant to sort of be a villain, but I've seen him portrayed as hero, I've seen him portrayed as villain, and and from the packaging, it's clear that he's sort of in the middle, so you sort of get to make up your own story. He definitely shows, both in his accessories and his looks, that he's sort of a dark reflection of the turtles, with a step towards uh, the villains. I mean, he obviously he's a turtle, but he has the spiky, uh, 
sort of villainous look. Uh, he has the Shredder's sort of claws coming out of his hands, but let's also take a look at those accessories, shall we? So like the other figures we've looked at, Shredder and Leo, he has an alternate head. I really like this alternate head. It gives him a new expression, but it is still well in line with what the original toy that this is emulating the other head looks like. This is how you do an extra head. No notes, all just compliments and thumbs up. Of course, we have the usual grippy hands and some open hands. Just like Leonardo, he has a second set of gripping hands with slightly more closed uh, fingers, and we have a little bit of a, a paint error there. And finally, we have a good old set of punchies. His weapons are also sort of a dark reflection of the other Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He has two swords like Leonardo, but you can see that the, the blade is bent and warped. It's got sort of a, a spiky protrusion. They're mismatched. They're not the same. I actually really like how the handle of this one is just a plank of wood. For Donatello, we have sort of a spiked mace instead of the bow, and we do have a side to represent Raphael, but as you can see, it's quite uh, banged up. It's seen better days. And he does have a single nunchuka, uh, which it's all metal and spiky, and as you can see again, it's it's just sort of the perversion. It's 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 inspired by, but it's just it's grotesque and, and dark and spiky, and it's very fun, and I love it. Even his throwing stars are a little twisted. He has one of this variety, and of this uh, slashed, uh, sort of slanted, warped variety. He has two of those. He does have some storage space on his belt, although as to what goes where, I couldn't even begin to tell you. He also comes with two of these grenades, which I don't know, might be a nod towards Bebop and Rocksteady. I, I believe the old toys had grenades or uh, something similar on their belts, on their costumes somewhere, or it could just be another thing. I don't know, he has two of those, two grenades. And of course, the ever-present classic unpainted weapons rack that I will never use or be interested in, that I sort of wish they would stop. And that is Slash. As you can see, he is quite big when compared to Leonardo. But either way, they look great together. They'll look greater together on the shelf. Let's go ahead and get them over there. Before we move on to the final group shot, I did just want to let you know that while I was editing some other footage, I did happen to uh, find out that the purple color here and the uh, sort of teal blocks here do signify that Slash is a villain, and uh, I was completely incorrect in my assumption that uh, this meant that he was sort of a good, bad, could be either, no, he's a villain, and I'm not very observant. Well, what do you know, in the end I did find someone who looks great riding Battle Cat. But there you have it, five brand new additions to the toy shelf, all wonderful, all welcome. I certainly can't wait to see how they all look together with everybody else. That is 15, 15 toys we have added to the toy shelf. I want to thank you for watching the video, for taking the time to join me on this journey into becoming a toy collector, adding all these wonderful figures to my shelf, and I want you to remember, always, 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 take care of yourself, take care of each other, simply take care.